um, professor is Dr. Mohamed uh, Makarita, who is going to educate us on post uh, prevention and management of post herpatic neuralgia. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, uh, Barbara, for your introduction. My, uh, my talk today about prevention and management of post herpetic neuralgia. I have no cause for disclosure. This lecture, based on our experience in Egypt, documented by a serial of publications in high ranked, respectable pain journals. First, I will discuss a case scenario. 75 years old diabetic male patient presented to ENT department with severe pain in the left side of the face, especially at the region of the left ear. Uh, for four days, patient was admitted and diagnosed as severe otitis media. Patient received intravenous antibiotic and analgesic. Three days later, physical appear over the left side of the face and the left ear and the diagnosis of acute herpes zoster was confirmed. Intravenous acyclovir was added and patient complained of intolerable facial pain and inability to sleep. Therefore, they asked for a consultation from our pain unit. This is our patient. Notice his uh, old age and notice the physical over the ear and the face. This is the Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which is uh, affection of genuclead ganglia of the seventh cranial nerve. It may followed by post herpetic neuralgia, facial palsy, and hearing loss. So it is a, this is a serious condition. Another case scenario, 75, 77 years old female patient referred to our clinic from OBD from, neurology, uh, from the neurology department with intolerable left supraorbital pain and inability to sleep. History of left of salmic branch herpes zoster infection three months ago. Family member were present with her in OBD and were anxious about the, the case. This is our lady old age female with supraorbital uh, so, supra, uh, uh, with ophthalmic branch herpes zoster followed by post herpetic neuralgia notice the scarring over the supraorbital nerve and over the, uh, the uh, left uh, forehead uh, now my question is there any difference between the two cases in the management this is the result of our discussion today Therefore, the, the objectives of our talk, first, to review the basophysiology of post herpetic neuralgia, discuss the evidence for post herpetic neuralgia prevention, and the treatment of post herpetic neuralgia either by medical therapy or intervention pain therapy. Varicella zoster virus is the causative agent for chickenpox in children and herpes zoster in adults. During the primary infection, the virus goes through the nerve from the skin to be dormant in the dorsal root ganglion. Then if cell-mediated immunity depressed, the virus will go to the other direction to the skin, causing herpes zoster eruption. If viral reactivation occurs, the viral travel along the peripheral nerve to the nerve ending, producing pain and skin lesion. Viral reactivation causes ganglionitis and neuritis, causing pain along the segmented distribution of the nerve. Clinical diagnosis of herpes zoster is made once rash appears. Before the rash appearance, there is a dilemma of differential diagnosis. 50% of herpes zoster are thoracic. The common is dorsal five and six. 20 are trigeminal, 20 are cervical, and 10 are lumbosacral. Clinical presentation of acute herpes zoster, general symptoms in the form of fever and fatigue, but herpes zoster pain is unique. It is unilateral, shooting, Stabbing, band like disease, hyperalgesia, and allodynia. Pain precedes skin eruption by five to seven days, 
and severity of the skin lesion, pain, and pain duration were exaggerated with the increase of age. Usually pain, hyperesthesia, gradually decreased, and the healing, healing occur in four to six weeks. In some, pain persists, producing what is known as post-herbetic neuralgia. This is one of the most important slides in my presentation, risk factor for acute herpes zoster. First age, all the age are high risk group. Malignancies, especially lymphoma, immune suppressive drug, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and steroid, malnutrition, diabetes, HIV, and the chronic debilitating disease like TB and renal failure. This is the risk factor for development of acute herpes zoster. But what are the predictor to develop post-herbetic neuralgia? Transmission of acute herpes zoster to a post-herbetic neuralgia. You can predict which patient will develop post-herbetic neuralgia. In addition to the previous factor, age is the most important factor for development of post-herbetic neuralgia. There is threefold increase in the incidence of post-herbetic neuralgia by the age of 70. Severity of the acute herpes zoster pain, the more severe the pain, the more likely to develop post-herbetic neuralgia because this means severe ganglionitis and neuritis in the affected nerve. Density of eruption, the more dense, the, most, the more likely to develop post-herbetic neuralgia. Of cellmic branch, per se, or trigeminal herpes zoster is one of the character of post-herbetic, likely to develop post-herbetic neuralgia. Even in young age, patient did not receive appropriate antiviral therapy because the antiviral therapy has a protective character. Remember the predictor for post-herbetic neuralgia, please. This is a case of post-herbetic neuralgia, notice the pigmentation, and this is associated with allodynia and the pain in this pigmented area. Post-herbetic neuralgia, either self-limiting disease, mild, or severe constantly, burning, dynamic allodynia with skin pigmentation. Post-herbetic neuralgia affects the quality of life. Many patients develop severe physical, occupational, psychological, and social disabilities. Therefore, it is desired to avoid, avoid this disaster sequence to, toward a more benign self-limiting disease. What is the pathophysiology of post-herbetic neuralgia? This is the nerve and this is the endoneural artery and viral inflammation induced profound sympathetic stimulation causing the vasoconstriction in the endoneural artery, reducing ischemia and you reduce blood flow and intra in the intraneural capillary bed. If ischemia persists, endoneural edema forms in this area. And increase in the neural pressure, more ischemia will result. Further decrease in the oxygen, oxygen, nutrition of the nerve and the blood flow, and reducing irreversible nerve damage and the scarring. So the whole picture is vasus spasm of the endoneural blood vessel. This damage will destroy the large myelinated E beta fiber, which are metab metabolically more active and spare the small fiber responsible for pain, which is the C fiber. Therefore, there is loss of the gate control and loss of the inhibitory uh, control over the incoming pain signals. Therefore, pain beca become continuous and more severe. Complication of acute herpes zoster include pneumonia, encephalitis, facial palsy, herpes zoster of salmitis, including ulcer, iritis, and keratitis. Secondary infection, post-herpetic neurology is the most common complication of post-herpetic neurology of acute herpes zoster. This is a case of lymphoma suffering from secondary infection. She suffered from acute herpes zoster and secondary infection, septicemia, and the end by this. This is keratitis. It's a shame in 21th century to find a patient like this. And this is a facial palsy associated with uh, Ramsey Hunt syndrome or facial palsy associated with facial herpes zoster. 
misdiagnosis of pre-eruptive stage of acute terrible zoster. Before eruption, you can't diagnose acute terrible zoster. You can suggest only acute terrible zoster if the, the vein is dermatomal. Myocardial infarction is one of the misdiagnoses, polycystitis, appendicitis, and the glaucoma. Now, management of herbal zoster. What is the aim of our management for a case for acute herbal zoster, like the first case scenario? To relieve pain and reduce its severity? Yes. Reduce duration of the attack and reduce the patient's suffering? Yes. Reduce the duration of eruption? Yes. Prevent the complication? This is the most important target of our strategy. Management of already presented cases with post herpetic neuralgia. Prevention of post herpetic neuralgia is easy, but treatment of post herpetic neuralgia is a challenge, and the result is disappointing. So I believe that one action can make a huge difference. Therefore, our mission is to increase the awareness about the new strategy for prevention of post herpetic neuralgia named the 10 step model for prevention of post herpetic neuralgia. What is our strategy for prevention of post herpetic neuralgia based on evidence based medicine? We can use varicella zoster vaccine. Systemic antiviral therapy, medication like antidepressant, anticonvulsant, opioid, and systemic corticosteroid. Syn sympathetic blockade for prevention of post herpetic neuralgia can be also used. Paracella zoster vaccine is given during the childhood period in developed countries, and this decreases the incidence of chicken box with subsequent reduction in the uh, in the incidence of acute herpes zoster and its reactivation, and therefore there is account for reduction in the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia. There is reduction, reduced the incidence of acute herpes zoster by 51% and the high, uh, the risk of post herpetic neuralgia by 66%. And it is approved by FDA in 2006. So we can use vaccination for children and booster dose for other uh, all elderly patients which has susceptible for development of acute herpes zoster, like immune compromised patient, patient on steroid or chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and elderly per se. Antiviral therapy, topical antiviral therapy is not effective, but systemic antiviral therapy is effective. We can use a cyclovir, valacyclovir, famacyclovir, and this duration of treatment is extended from seven days up to 10 days if there is new eruption, a cyclovir per se must start it in the first three days of eruption. And the dose is 800 milligram five times per day. The usage of appropriate antiviral therapy was associated with 50% reduction in the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia at six months. This is a great achievement. Antidepressant, amitriptyline. There is only a single study discussing the value of amitriptyline in preventing of post neuralgia in 1997. And it is all the study and not reproducible, not replicated. And this is the weakness in this study. To myself, I didn't believe that amitriptyline early can prevent post neuralgia. Even I did not use amitriptyline for my patient because my patient is old, can be suffering from comorbidities like advanced cardiac condition, sniperosted hyperplasia or glaucoma. The three are absolute contraindication for use of amitriptyline. So the use of amitriptyline on old age is uh, uh, questionable and you need uh, no comorbidities uh, like cardiac condition. So in this randomized double blind study, it is single study, but it is randomized double blind study. So it appeared in the evidence. 
anti convulsant anti convulsant like gabapentin and the pregabalin can be used as adjuvant with sympathetic blockade they may be useful in relieving persistent paresthesia disease and allodynia but remember that it has no value in prevention of posterior bitter neuralgia it can alleviate pain decrease pain in conjunction with the sympathetic blockade but it has no value in prevention of posterior bitter neuralgia opioid opioid is the mainstay for short term treatment of severe pain there must be a clear understanding that opioids are to be used for a limited term in case of severe non cancer pain for you know barbara the opioid stigma in europe this, and in the united states this is because of the use of high doses of opioids for non cancer patients for acute resistor tramadol and oxycodone can be used and it is suitable anti uh, uh, uropathic medication systemic corticosteroid a clean review in 2010 found no significant difference between systemic corticosteroid and placebo in preventing posterior bit neuralgia however this combination improve acute resistor pain patient quality of life compared to a cyclovirulin alone this allow the quicker return to the work and sleep, improve the sleep better so systemic steroid has no preventive effect on on posterior bitic neuralgia but systemic steroid improves the symptoms this is for systemic oral or intravenous what about sympathetic blockade for prevention of posterior bitic neuralgia several study demonstration of inclusion of steroid with local anesthetic in the neuroaxial blockade for management of acute episodes and posterior bitic neuralgia uh, prevention this is four study three of them are randomized where randomized clinical trial and one is non randomized clinical trial what is the evidence from this study by the year of 2011 the evidence in the evidence based book in chapter 17 one time of oral injection to be negative remember it is one time epidural injection to be negative no effect repeated paravertebra and the sympathetic nerve block to see positive this is because of the obesity and the few number of the studies However, in the light of recently available randomized placebo clinical trials, the evidence must be reviewed. Recent studies include effect of early stellate ganglion block on the facial nerve zoster and the prevention of posterior bitic neuralgia. This is from Egyptian team from Tanta and Mansoura University by my colleague Yasser Ahmed and Yusuf Bayoumi and me. This is stellate ganglion block. and this is our patient suffering from ramsey han syndrome after certain day, certain days there is improvement of his pain no sequelae like posterior bitic neuralgia or no facial palsy or hearing loss this is a great uh, 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 chief this is the paper and the incidence of posterior bitic neuralgia in the active group was was significant after 3 months and 6 months and the duration of pain also significantly reduced for thoracic herpes zoster the same team produced published another uh, uh, paper in the pain practice which has uh, big uh, known for uh, now single bara vertebral injection for acute thoracic herpes zoster this is a single injection this is a bara vertebral space and it contains somatic intercostal nerve and sympathetic fiber so it is a sympathetic blockade and the block can extend to the epidural space, space producing epidural blockade in 70% of our patient this is bara vertebral pro, block this is very nice showing the epidural spread and this is one of our patient and after about 3 weeks there is improvement is pain and the result of this study was that after 3 months there is non significant reduction in the incidence of posterior bitic neuralgia notice 15 versus 8 but it is not significant after 6 months there is significant improvement 
in the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia. The duration of pain and the duration of eruption also improve in this study. In 2017, a review, uh, a systematic review and a meta analysis found that this include about uh, 800 uh, paper, but only select nine paper because of the inclusion criteria uh, and avoid the bias in this study. So they uh, reviewed a big number of paper, but uh, included a small number of paper. And these nine studies include our randomized clinical trial from Egypt. And also these studies contain the least bias in the, its methodology. And the result is early sympathetic plocate can decrease the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia significantly. Notice the diamond. After six months, also there is significant decrease in the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia and after one year. The conclusion of this study, early supplement therapy can significantly reduce the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia. Supplement means that the drugs like gabapentin, pregabalin, amitriptyline, and TENS, in addition to the intervention. But subgroup analysis, they found that early systemic adjuvant like gabapentin, pregabalin, amitriptyline, and TENS has no significantly reduced the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia. But early supplement intervention procedures has a beneficial effect on preventing of post herpetic neuralgia with a high p-value. They concluded that if use of intervention procedure for acute pain from acute herpes zoster may be preferred choice for patient without contraindication, but the evidence is moderate. More data from high quality randomized clinical trial will be needed to, to confirm the result. This is in 2017. So the intervention pain therapy has a great role in prevention of post herpetic neuralgia. In another paper, we want to put a strategy for prevention of post herpetic neuralgia known as the 10 step model for prevention of post herpetic neuralgia published in Pain Physician in 2017. And the 10 step model formed from 10 step. First, awareness of the population and education of the healthcare providers about the nature of herpes zoster infection and its complication. Vaccination for children and the high risk group. Early diagnosis of acute herpes zoster, early use of antiviral therapy in optimal dose and optimal duration, identification of risk factor for the development of post herpetic neuralgia. As I mentioned, the age is most important factor. Stratification of acute herpes zoster into one of three groups. This is very important slide. Notice that if your patient is below 50 without risk factor, not diabetic, not uh, immune compromised, not renal failure, no bone marrow transplantation, you can give antivirus therapy and symptomatic pain therapy without sympathetic blockade. But if your patient is below 50, and with one or more of the risk factor, diabetic, immune compromised, this patient will shift and deal to us as if it is above 50. And the strategy will be antiviral therapy, symptomatic pain therapy, plus repeated sympathetic blockade. And sympathetic blockade can be used according to the region. Head and neck, still a ganglion block. Trancal, paravertebral block, epidural, and thoracic sympathectomy. Lambosacral, Codal epidural, lumbar epidural, or lumbar sympathetic uh, blockade. This is repeated injection at least two block or continuous blockade for two weeks. This is our strategy. Optimization of symptomatic pain therapy, including anti neuropathic drug, antidepressant, anticonvulsant, and opioid and tramadol, and follow up of the patient and the detection of complication uh, like keratitis and good reporting, filing, col uh, collection of the data and the analysis of the data. From the seventh step, you can notice that the number and the frequency 
of blockade did not clarify it. I said that repeated injection at least two five. Therefore, we conduct a new study accepted in the pain physician in 2020 in May. The effect of repeated paravertebral injection with local anesthetic and steroid intervention of post cervical neuralgia by Dr. Yasser Amr from Tanta and Demi from Mansoura University. And from this study, we can found that two and three have equal result, but in patients with multiple comorbidities and risk factor, we prefer three injection rather than two. Therefore, the golden rules in acute herpesoter management, the earlier the treatment, the less likely to develop post neuralgia. I mean, their injection must be done in first week of after eruption to avoid vasospasm and uh, scarring of the nerve. In high risk group, early aggressive treatment is mandatory. Treatment of post neuralgia. Treatment aim in post neuralgia is just to relieve pain and reduce its severity and improve the quality of life. It is almost a palliative to improve the quality of life. There is absolute, there is no cure from post neuralgia. In some mild cases, there is spontaneous Resolution of the case, but it is not the rule, especially in our community in Egypt and third world where there is no vaccination. Because vaccination, the attenuated virus cannot be reproduced and produce severe acute herpes zoster. But in our countries, there is no vaccination. So it is a wild virus producing acute herpes zoster followed by severe uh, post herpetic neuralgia. Treatment modalities for post herpetic neuralgia includes symptomatic pain therapy and the intervention pain therapy. This is the New England Journal treatment of post herpetic neuralgia. This is a treatment modality and this is the number needed to be treated and the lidocaine batch two, and it is approved by FDA, capsaicin batch 3.3, and it is approved, not approved by FDA, gabapentin and brigabalin, also approved by FDA by take care for the serum creatinine, because these drugs are 100% secreted by kidney, take care for serum creatinine, tricyclic and the, the recent, it is off-label use, and remember the contraindication of amitriptyline, which is glaucoma, senile prostate hyperplasia, and the advanced cardiac condition. Because the amitriptyline can increase the silent death by 20 to 25 percent in advanced cardiac diseases. Morphine, oxycodone, and tramadol. Remember the risk of abuse, and remember that tramadol associated with amitriptyline in high dose may induce serotonin like syndrome. This is the evidence for intervention. Acupuncture is not effective. Sympathetic blockade in already presented cases of post herpetic neuralgia is not effective and better to be avoided. Intrasecan missile prednisolone is not effective and please avoid it can produce fungal meningitis and arachnidomyelitis. Excision of the skin, it is not effective. Butylenium toxin can be used in uh, refractory cases and it is effective, but the duration is from three to six months. Spinal cord uh, stimulation, there is only, only prospective case series and it is effective in uh, uh, developed country and found to be effective, but uh, its efficacy decreases with time. Deep brain stimulation, uh, also it is inconclusive. Pulsed radio frequency for dorsal root ganglion and intercostal nerve for thoracic post herpetic neuralgia is functioning, but also it has a limited duration, about one year. This is a study, for a randomized clinical trial for pulsed radio frequency. Notice he used tramadol in addition to pulsed radio frequency from the start when was above seven, uh, six or seven for severe pain. Therefore, the pain did not come below three. In 2018, we published the ultrasound, uh, uh, ultrasound pulse radio frequency in management of thoracic post herpetic neuralgia. But the trick here is first, first we give two weeks of pregabalin 
300 milligram per day. This will decrease the central sensitization and the, bring the pain from severe to moderate, from seven to five. And then we uh, uh, did the radio frequency, pulsed radio frequency for intercostal nerve. And this associated with reduction in the pain for about six months below three on VAS, below 30. This is a great achievement. Rather than the other people from China, they start early and found the result is not good. And ultrasound guided the conclusion, BRF for intercostal nerve in combination with pharmacotherapy in management of thoracic post-therapeutic neuralgia is promising treatment modality. It provides effective post-therapeutic pain control, less energetic consumption, and significantly improved the quality of life of our patients. This interview in uh, 2009, uh, 19, this is intervention treatment for post herpetic neuralgia, the evidence in the pain position, and the result found that we can use trillium toxins, triamicillone subcutaneous, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, peripheral nerve stimulation, paravertebral block, stellate ganglion block, are recommended first, followed by pulsed RF. I agree, because of the cost, the price. If pain persists, we can use spinal cord stimulation. And they avoid the use of intrathecal missile prednisolone because it is dangerous and the level is too. We need more randomized clinical trial. In 2020, in the pain physician, a study from China found that spinal cord stimulation and pulsed RF for dorsal root ganglia both are effective. Remember that it has a duration of effect, not continuous effect. The, the, the effect of spinal cord it is a spinal cord stimulation is costly procedure and uh, many complications like infection, migration of the. Uh, uh, the blades and the like this and decrease its efficacy can occur. And the pulsed RF has a limited duration about six to one year. At the end of my lecture, please remember that prevention is better than treatment of both cervix neuralgia. The 10 step model is effective tool for prevention of both cervix neuralgia. The earlier the treatment, the least likely to develop post neuralgia. In high risk group, early aggressive treatment is mandatory. Treatment of post neuralgia, sorry, it is palliative. Thank you. We have some questions for um, you. Yes, uh, welcome, Roberto. <laughs> Makariti, so let me, let me find the questions here. Yes. Um, here is one. Uh, it says, um, uh, Professor, do you have any experience with ultrasound guided ESPB for thoracic um, post herpetic neuralgia? Rictor spine is facial plain and associated with uh, paravertebral block. The target of our uh, block in, uh, in uh, post herpetic neuralgia is to examine the response of the nerve for the local anesthetic. If there is a result, this means that it is still a viable nerve because post herpetic neuralgia has some incidence of deafferentation, deafferentation pain. If the pain is not improved with the block local anesthetic, this means that high incidence of deafferentation pain. And there is no result of pulsed radio frequency in patient with deafferentation. It needs spinal cord stimulation. So the facial blind block can attenuate the pain of per se, can attenuate the pain of post herpetic neuralgia. And it can be combined, combined with high doses of brigabalin, like brigabalin 300 milligram per day. So it is also a combination therapy. Thank you. There is another question for you, uh, Professor. What um, is the role of opioids and when should you use opioids um, for post-herpetic neuralgia? Yes. Uh, 
the international policy found that opioid is the second step as anti-neuropathic drugs. So we need to use a drug with the ability to, uh, uh, to uh, bring a result with neuropathic drug. Which drug? If it is mu pure mu agonist, we need high doses. But for tramadol and oxycodone, tramadol works by different mechanism, like activation of the descending inhibitor pathway, modulation of the nimida receptor. This, uh, this uh, uh, sodium channel block, these uh, mechanisms are effective in both therapeutic neuralgia. How while uh, the oxycodone works by its cab effect. So if it is pure mu agonist, we need high dose of opioid. And this is carry a high risk of abuse. We should use opioid for a limited duration to avoid the abuse of opioid, especially in non-cancer patients. Wonderful. Do we have time for one more question, Dr. Mahdi? Yes. Yeah, you can. Okay. Thank okay, you. so here's one more question for you, Professor. Okay. How it says, how long should we use gabapentin for post-hepatic neuralgia? Yes. Provided that your patient has normal kidney function, my advice to start 150 twice per day, high doses to attenuate central sensitization and to build a trust between you and your patient. This 150 twice per day associated with 30% reduction of his pain. This is documented in the paper. So 300 per day associated with 30% of his pain. And this after two weeks, you can do pulsed radio frequency as I did in my publication. So don't start by a uh, wild horse. Don't try to catch him. Give some uh, sweetie uh, sedation then catch him. This is the same idea. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, looks like there's one more that's popped up here, Professor. What is the mechanism okay. that stellate ganglion blocks prevent the post-herpetic neuralgia? Again, remember the evidence. The effect of sympathetic blockade is not conclusive for treatment of post-herpetic neuralgia. Sympathetic blockade for acute herpes zoster to break the cycle of vasospasm of the intineural blood vessel, of the intineural blood vessel, and to increase the oxygen and nutrition to the nerve to avoid uh, the scarring of the nerve. But in post herpetic neuralgia, if you put the definition of post herpetic neuralgia three months after the incidence of acute herpes zoster, then there is no role for sympathetic blockade. If you put it as one month, please try sympathetic blockade because in some of my patients, it bring a result. So the, sh the gray zone is between one month and three months. Do you, do you know the, the definition of post herpetic neuralgia in some books, one, one month, and in another books, three months. For myself, I consider the post herpetic neuralgia after three months. So after three months, no role for sympathetic blockade. After one month, there is a role in the gray area to use sympathetic blockade. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I think that's all the questions that have this popped up. Barbara, remember that this is my experience and my colleague in Egypt. And this is documented in our publications. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful lecture, Professor.